Hello everyone, uh, my name is Dave Whiteley, I'm Technical Director of Invisid UK Limited and this uh, webinar is uh, entitled uh, Autodesk Inventor Multibody Modelling Tooling for Pipe Runs. Um, this is explaining how we can use multibody modelling to uh, produce uh, tooling for tubing, bent tubing that may be used in say the automotive industry. Um, the automotive industry would design some sort of tube and pot or pipe run and give us the uh, node points of the uh, pipe run and, and centerline bend radii. And myself as a manufacturer, I would then have to take that data, produce the tubing, and from that produce the tooling to actually manufacture, it, manufacture this, uh, this pipe run. So that's what I'm going to run through today. So we're first going to Inventor. And I'm going to create a quick uh, pipe run. So we'll just go to... Uh, pipe run tool and in here we'll uh, say that we want a pipe run that's got four nodes in it and we'll just put some point data in here and in the centerline bend rads and an internal diameter and an external diameter of the tube. Click on OK on that. That will then produce us a pipe run. Now the problem with this, with a pipe run produced from uh, car line data, as an example, um, we need to orientate this in relationship to some uh, base XYZ uh, coordinate system. And probably the easiest way of doing this, if I just save this tube, Probably the easiest way of doing this is to actually place it into an assembly. So what I've got here is an assembly um, that contains a part already that represents the top of the, um, the bolster or the base plate that I'm going to uh, create pillars on that will hold my um, tube. So I can assemble this in place. This is already in the correct XYZ position. So if I just place my tube into here and assemble it into position, flash with that face there. I'll do, I don't need to rotate that in any way, I'll ground the tube, I don't want to add any more constraints to that. So there's my assembly uh, with the representation of the top of the plate, my uh, tube or pipe run in position and I now need to create some sort of pillar system to hold this tube in place for manufacturing purposes. Probably a neat way here is to actually use the shrink wrap tool and the shrink wrap tool will enable me to push this out as a solid. I don't really need to worry about anything. I don't need any work features or sketches. I'll do some hole patching. I'll explain why in a second. But I'll push that out as a shrink wrap. The great thing about the shrink wrap is it's also fixed the holes at the end of the tube in because when I come to cut the tube in from the pillars, I don't really want the hole inside the tube coming through and causing problems. So there's my part that contains my tube. So I'm now going to use uh, multi-body modeling techniques to actually create some pillars. I'm going to create a pillar under this tube section and a pillar under this tube section. One tool that we can use uh, for this, um, because we need to start constructing some complex compound work planes, is we can create a 3D sketch and use the silhouette curve command. This will actually create me some 3D sketch geometry that I can use to put my work planes through. So we'll select the body, the direction, and that will then give us some uh, sketch geometry that we can use to place our work planes. So let's just do the easy one first. We'll take a plane and put it through this axis, sorry, this edge and this edge, and then create a new sketch on the plane and we'll draw a rectangle representing the top of a pillar. I'll do this by eye, you would obviously dimension this into position. Finish the sketch and then extrude this to the top face of my base plate. Okay, there's the first pillar created. I, need, I now need to cut this from, uh, cut the tubing from the top of the pillar. 
So we can use the copy design, copy object function here. And the copy object function will let me create a surface model from this uh, tube that I can then use sculpt with. Select the surface, select cut, and that will sculpt the um, surface from the tubing around the top of my pillar. Right, let's create the top of the bolster or the base plate itself. So we'll sketch on the surface here and use this geometry to create ourselves 25 mil base plate. But remembering I'm in a single part and multi-body modeling, I need to remember to create a new solid from this so that these are then two separate solid bodies within my part. Finally, we'll do the one over here. So again, we put a plane across my two 3D sketch geometry items here and then sketch on the plane that's going through that tube section draw my rectangle again you would dimension this so I'm just gonna do it by eye but perhaps project the end of my bolster up and use a collinear constraint to put that up against the edge of the base plate or bolster finish the sketch extrude that new body to top of my base plate so I've now got three solid bodies in my design. Let's just tidy this up, it, up a little bit and take some uh, geometry off. I'm going to turn off the work geometry. So there we are in our design. One thing I've forgotten to do here is to do a sculpt on the final. There we go. Okay, and last but not least on this uh, webinar, I've just uh, produced some uh, bolted uh, holes for the uh, base plate. So if I just sketch on the underside, project some geometry, the base of the pillars. And then on the underside here, just put some points representing where my holes are going to go. Again, we would dimension these. And we'll add some holes. Now, with multi-body modeling, you've got to remember that the solid that you sketched on is the only solid that it's going to drill through. If I want to uh, drill through any other solids, as I do with these pillars, then I, have to, I would have to click on the solids button and select the other pillars to drill my holes through. Okay, let's do a drilled hole, counterboard for an ISO, uh, socket head cap screw, M10, and we'll put a depth in of Forty millimeters. That'll do. We can see the preview on the screen here. Now it's drilling through all the solid bodies that I've selected, and there's our cap screw holes. You would just obviously have to put some threads in the uh, pillars. So there's my three components representing my tooling. Now the reason why we tend to do this sort of thing for tubing is that that pillar is easier to machine. That's a, a semicircular cutout. It's easier to machine on a CNC machine than making a, this vertical and having a compound plane to worry about. So by using the, the tools I've shown you in the multi-body modeling, we can very easily create tooling to go around our uh, tube. Obviously, if the tube changes, the tooling updates with it. Finally, we need to save this and push this out as an assembly. We do that by going to manage and make components, select the bodies that we want to push out to an assembly, give the assembly a name. Next. In this case, I've just left the solids as solid two, three, and four, which is not good practice. Um, if you forget, you can always change the name of the components here against the component name column. 
and click on OK on that. This will then push it out as an assembly. And we've now got a complete assembly that we can now add our bolts to and produce working drawings from because these are now separate parts. As you can see in the browser here, if I open this up, this component, this block here, the pillar, is a separate component that I can now produce working drawings from or just output straight to a CNC machining system. So there we are. Thank you very much for watching and uh, please uh, have a look at our YouTube channel which is Envisage UK LTD and uh, hope to uh, show you some more. Thank you very much.